Hello community, look at this little fellow, a koala. And it is a koala large language model we're going to talk today. So University of Berkeley, the Artificial Intelligence Research Center released a new model. And in particular, it's a dialogue model for academic research. And there's something magnificent about it that will change your life. So at first, what they done. They fine-tuned a Llama-based LLM on dialogue data scrapped from the web. So you might say, okay, so it's a Llama plus fine-tuned, so like our Vicuna or Stanford's Alpaca self-instruct data set or any other fine-tuned Llama model that came out in the last two weeks. Well, not really, because if you look closely, you see that it's not about maximizing the quantity, but they focused on high quality data set. And the nice thing is that the resulting model, their LLM, their Koala 13 billion parameter model, shows a competitive performance even to existing models and even to GPT-4. Let's have a visualization of this. So let's have here an interactive demo. We have here chat with open large language model. And the nice thing here is we have four models we can choose here in one demo. We have Vicuna, we have Koala, what I just told you today. We have the classical Stanford Alpaca, and we have the old fashioned Llama from Meta, where you have to ask Meta permission that they send you over the weights for this model. So now we're going to choose alpaca. Yeah, let's choose with alpaca. Let's go for alpaca. And we're going to say, hmm, tell me a story about quantum physics. This is what every system should be trained on. So you see we have yeah, processing. Nobody is there. So alpaca 13b. Tell me a story about quantum physics. So let's see what this system comes up with. Once upon a time, there was an electron that was constantly moving in a strange and unpredictable way. That's it. That's it. OK. So what we do, we take this sentence. Tell me a story about quantum physics. We say clear history. Thank you. Hello, there's three. Then we choose what we choose. We choose Koala. So let's go with Koala 13B. Let's enter here our sentence about quantum physics. And let's see what we come up with. And here we go now with our Koala 13 billion trainable parameter model. And you see, it is a chatbot trained on conversation with the user on storytelling. This is the beauty. Compare this performance to uh, our models. Can we say continue? And yes, it can continue and it works beautifully. So you see, this is really a chatbot optimized. Yes, we do not have sliders for temperature or other parameters. But just to show you here the raw performance difference, I think it is eye opening. And then you say, hey, what about Llama? Let's take the good old fashioned Llama. Let's enter our sentence here. Tell me a story about quantum physics and go with Llama. So this is a good old one that has not been further trained. And oh, oh wow, this is OK. This, this is Llama. <laughs> OK, so if you want to experience Llama, this is the performance of Llama. So you might say, OK, fella, now listen, can we please go to the technical details? Show us the code. OK, here we are. So what? Berkeley found that our results suggest that learning from high quality data set can mitigate some of the shortcoming of smaller models. So what they set out to create high quality data set might be the way to do to enable safer, more factual and more capable models than simply increasing the size of existing system. And they said maybe it's also not the way just to reformat existing data set as Q&A data set. And this is amazing. And here's their data pool that they used. 
they had here a chat GPT distillation data set and they had some open source data set. Now, chat GPT is clear for you. Open source data set, yeah, they lose some grade school math instructions, some screenplay books, dialogue data set. They use Stanford Alpaca, you know, the self instructed chat GPT 52K data set. They used for Nantropic uh, 160K human rated examples. And from OpenAI summarization, they used 93K of data where humans had some feedback regarding the quality of the model. So you might say, okay, listen, buddy, this gets boring. Is there anything new that you can tell us? Yes, absolutely. So we have here our monumental GPT-4 system that run on the Microsoft supercomputer cloud center, hundred thousands of GPUs. And then what we do, what are those models? We have a mechanism, what we call self-instruct for a fine tuning process, where we extract here the knowledge of these monumental LLMs and we create a new model, a new, tiny, beautiful model. And this model has only 7 billion trainable parameters, or in case of Koala now, 13 billion trainable parameters. And those are the models here that currently we are all focused on. But you know what? Something beautiful happened with Koala. Let me show you. One of their sentences, and this sentence is always there in all of the LLMs in the last weeks and months. We train our system, like here with Koala 13B model, on a single NVIDIA DGX server with eight GPUs, with eight A100, or now eight H Papa 100 GPUs. So we have a total of about 640 gigabyte VRAM. Just to make sure, those, those models, those little tiny things here, to, well, you know, it's not train. You know now an expert watching my videos. You know, it is instruction fine-tuned, which is different from fine-tuned. And in my next video, I will go into details here and the code implementation if you want to instruct fine-tune an LLM versus the classical fine-tuned methodology in the code for an LLM. But they say, hey, we need 640 gigabytes on our GPUs to handle this tiny little monster here. And then there's a sentence that will change your life. And this is why I show you here this beautiful implementation of Koala 13B LLM, because this sentence reads, the Koala model is implemented with JAX and FLAX libraries. And if you know what this is, you will understand why I'm so excited about it. Because a long time ago, months ago, I showed you that the hardware infrastructure in 2023 goes to a different compiler structure, to a different accelerator on the chip and different programming language. And this is my first video I did on this. And on the software part, I did this video. Why checks? Why the hell a short machine learning framework in 2023? Because we have PyTorch 2. Hey, we have it. We have TensorFlow 2, TensorFlow 3 coming up. So why the hell do we need a new ML framework? Why do we need JAX and FLAX? And this is something that will give us extreme power for the new models in AI that are coming up, the LLM models. So on this channel, starting in a week, I will have a new series for you on JAX. I will explain JAX to you. I will give you examples from the Flax library. We will build our neural network, our transformer in JAX with the Flax library. And in total, we will have a new coding paradigm. We will switch to functional programming. And you might ask, hey, does it mean I have to learn a third framework apart from PyTorch 2 and TensorFlow 2? Now I have to learn JAX and FLAX? And the answer is, if you want to be able to follow 
the current development and the future development, yes. Because the professional programming uh, is now switching to functional programming. Because we have to. The hardware is changing in a way that we can have also a software implementation that perfectly fits the hardware configuration now. And we are talking about distributed cloud computing. 8, 16, 32 GPUs, 100 of GPUs. We have to switch here from OOP to functional programming. And this is a beautiful new programming paradigm in which we bind everything, everything, every model, every layer, everything you can imagine in pure mathematical functions. And this will allow us to achieve speed improvements between 10 times and 100 times faster than we have today with PyTorch 2 or, or TensorFlow 2. And this is the beauty, this is the beauty of Koala, of this Koala LLM, because now it's the first time that the University of Berkeley already implemented it in functional programming. And just to show you the code, we see here that the Llama implementation is in JAX Llama. The JAX Flax GPD and Roberta is in Transformer. Most of the JAX utilities are here from a special library, but we will use, of course, here the original. And the code base is, of course, JAX SQL. So if you look now here at Llama JAX, you see here, you have here all the models. You have, of course, fill out now the Google form that you are authorized to get accepted by Meta that you are allowed to use the weights of Llama. Okay, but even here, if we have then here, I look at MLXU, you see that we use here the Chax utilities and everything. So we will dive in into this beautiful thing. And of course, here with Chax SQL, this is built on top of Hugging Face Transformer Library. There is now here a very large trainable models in JAX, and it supports currently GPT-2, GPT-J, T5, and the opt models. But of course, we will learn it from the ground up, so we will be able to apply JAX and FLAX to every model. Either it's a BERT model or it's a LLM model, whatever is based on a transformer. We will code a transformer in JAX, in FLAX, and we will call these objects then a FLAX former. But this is five videos in. So let me just show you here for Koala, you have here Hugging Face Hub, the Google Drive, you can find here everything. If you want to here recover the model weights, you have here every explanation. And of course, yes, you can convert the weights to the Hugging Face Transformer. You have the prompts. You can start immediately with it. But the most beautiful thing here, where is it? Most beautiful thing here with our new Berkeley Artificial Intelligence Center Koala model. It is in JAX and in FLAX, and it will change your professional way of working with artificial intelligence.